Just a quick video update on the progress of the actual shell now. So I've spent all day today lining up every single panel on the car, making sure that the car is uh, dead straight um, and then in line to our jig. Uh, what, what we've done is uh, obviously test fitted the rear quarters back panel. Please ignore the, the rear window frame because that is literally just laid on the car. <clears throat> but what you can see from what we've been doing, um, the door gaps, so the doors themselves, both doors had been uh, adjusted out of line and the tops of the doors, one was out, one was out, one was in. So obviously all the, all the doors had been messed around with by the, the guys who had been working on it previously with the fiberglass. Now the doors obviously are perfectly in line, they run parallel with the sills, uh, they run parallel with the body panel. You can see the, the door gap to the rear quarter uh, and the door, gap, the door gap to the front wing are perfect. Exactly the same as all the other E30s I've measured around here. Then if I take you down to the side of the actual car, you can actually see the line of the swage along the car is actually lined up perfectly. Again, the swage is perfect from front to back. So the swage line lines up, the doors lined up. The door itself is lined up along the bottom of the sill. This is with the old sill still attached. You can see the marks along the door that I've made. Um, they are to take the, the actual gap measurement from front to back so I can line the new sill up when I, when I take these panels off now. So what I'm going to do is drill multiple holes in the actual rear quarters and back panel. Now I have everything lined up in the right position. Uh, I can drill dowel holes and every time I put the panels back on now I've got to line them holes up and the bodywork will be perfectly in line again. So given the fact that <clears throat> we had front fiberglass wings on and then we had the doors which were out of line, I had hardly anything to work from which was in its original position. So what I had to do first initially was to bolt the rear quarters on using the pinholes that were provided for the rear axle beam bush mounts and then line the rear quarter up so it's straight up and down the car with the very top hall for the rear pop-out windows. So line that up. Once I had a line coming down here, down the actual rear quarter to door gap, I could work, work out how far the door was out. I then moved forward to the front wings and then repeat the same process, worked out the gap I needed, where I want the front wings in relation to moving them back and forth. The reason we have standard wings on here is purely for line-up reasons. Um, we are having M3 metal or M3 wings on the front of the car, but these front genuine wings give us a good idea of how they fit. They fit perfectly and to how to line the car up perfectly. So you can see using the original wings, I've been able to line the door gaps up between the wing and the door line the rear quarter gaps up between the wing and the door, the, the rear quarter and the door, sorry. <clears throat> Moving round to the front, obviously the bonnet was out of line, so I've lined the bonnet gap up perfectly, the wing meets the bonnet perfectly, again the wing meets the bonnet perfectly. Everything's been measured with the vernier gauge, so I know that each side is exactly the same size gap and width gap as the drivers and passengers side. So I now know that this car is actually lined up how it would have been lined up when it left the factory. So the door gaps again, again along the sill. You'll see my marks along the bottom of the door. They're the measurements I've taken between the door and the sill. So when I fit my new sill on, I will then copy the measurements, mimic the, the gap along the sill so everything fits how it should. Again, you can see I've lined the door up around the frame. So everything at the minute is fully adjustable on this car. Again, like I say, just forget about the, the window frame. 
the window frame is literally just laid on the car for looks. Okay? So, in respect to the position of the door, the rear quarters, you can see the move down there, the swage lines are perfectly in line all the way from front to back. Alright, so I know that the front wings are fitted correctly, the bonnets are fitted correctly, the doors are now fitted correctly, the gap of the actual door all the way up and along the roof is now correct. I put the spacers back in the door because the guys had moved the, removed the spacers. The reason they'd removed the spacers out of the door is because the fiberglass panel which was sat on here was actually a thinner arch than the arch which is on here now. And the reason that is is because the arch needs to be supported along the top here and also along the bottom. It needs to be supported top and bottom and that actually squashes the metal work out as a bulge. So it actually gives a wider arch. When they've done their fiberglass one, they didn't support it like they, like they should have along the bottom, and they actually just laid it over the original bottom rear quarter. So that actually drew the bulge in a bit. So they then ended up with a door which sat past the actual rear quarter panel. So their attempts were to remove the spaces inside the door hinges to get the door to sit in further but then they then had to do the same with the front wing so everything they they done had a tumble effect with the the way the car lined up hence why none of it lined up when when i first originally looked at the the actual fiberglass car you can see the back panel a genuine back panel just lines up so much more beautiful i mean uh, once, once we nip that together, that joint, line it up 100% and then braise that joint, that is going to be a stunning piece of work, that there. The same with the opposite corner. So once this, once this joint gets lined up, that gets pushed together a bit harder, that will be perfect, that back panel. The lights will actually line up and meet. So, yeah, the pro so the process of what has actually got to happen next is every part which is like the, the rear quarters, the back panel, will all be nailed, dowel drilled. So there'll be a bolt, a nut and bolt, which will hold the rear quarters onto the car. They will be drilled in the position they're in now. Then I will remove the rear quarters, the back panel, and remove the outer sill skins complete and replace the outer sill skins and I had to do all this work purely because I need to know that the car was straight the panels would line up and I can get the measurements off the door to the sill correct when I fit the new sill all right so sounds like a lot of work but that's the difference between making the car line up and look like a factory fitted job rather than just being a fiberglass frame together job you know and, and, and not very nice at the end of it. So I'll just show you this, this sill panel. <clears throat> so this whole sill panel now, that entire panel can now be fitted. You can see that that actually steps in behind the rear quarter. So the original rear quarter panel, that side skirt or that sill, sorry, goes along, steps down, there's a braised joint across here. The rear quarter then swages out to its bulge. And that is an added strength because it's all one continuous piece of metal without any joints. That's why we went for an original sill and not an eBay aftermarket out of skin weld on. So you can see that we've actually started the process of unpicking the spot welds along the sill itself. So once I've, again, once I've doweled all this car up, See the way the doors shut, doors are lined up perfectly, doors shut right. Everything is now looking, you know, looking a plus for this car. This car is going to be an absolute beautiful piece of equipment once it's done with all these new panels in, new sills, new rear quarters, new inner tubs, battery tray, back panel, and the actual underside of this car. I believe that we're going to take it back to bare metal and well, fully strip it 
remove the undersealer, paint it, key the paint up, underseal it, then paint on top of the undersealer. So there's like two layers of protection for this car. This car's just going to last forever. But we've also sort of done half, well, we're halfway through the process of doing another one here for another customer. You can see that car is on the spit and we're doing exactly the same process for that customer. So the underside of the car has been fully stripped back to bare metal. It's now going to go away and be fully sandblasted and then the same principle, going to fully coat it so it can be safe for road use, all the original undersealer um, back in place. All right, so that's today's progress.